Hey guys, Streaming Iraq War Veteran here again. Uh, this is about my computer this time. And uh, I basically wanted to show you guys what I've done on uh, my computer recently. Uh, I don't know where to start. Let's see. Well, the first thing I've done is the uh, I replaced the heat sink with the Corsair H100i V2. Which uh, seems to be a pretty good all-in-one cooler. It's a 100... Uh, 240 millimeter red and I have two Corsair SP 120s on top of the red rings and uh, there's my 32 gigs of DDR4 at 3000 megahertz those are the Rip Jaws 4 now for my motherboard it's still the uh, Asus X99 Deluxe U 3.1 board but I have um, painted the plastic piece back there I was going to take that uh, metal heat shroud off, but I didn't. And, uh, I don't think you can see it, but underneath the chipset, I took the white plastic, uh, white metal thing on top of that off. And the other thing is, uh, for you, any of you guys that do want to get a all-in-one cooler like this that does have those same board, the chipset heat sink right there will get in the way. I had to customize that a little bit. I had to take it off and trim that last heat sink. Uh, fin down so I could actually plug in the USB cord as you can see that's why it's gray and shiny right there underneath it but there is my EVGA GTX 980 Ti classified my Corsair H AX1 AX1200i power supply I did put that shroud on there to cover up the wires my two Samsung 850 Evos both 500 gigabytes and then I got a Western Digital Black 2 terabyte 7200 drive. My 220 millimeter fan in the front from Mitt Phoenix. Very good fan. So it's a Spectre Pro, I believe. Uh, let's see what else. There's one another Corsair 140 millimeter fan, red LED. I think that's a SP series also. And then uh, another Bit Phoenix. 200 millimeter fan on the side and that's a red LED it's a, also the Spectre Pro but what I would like to talk about today is the fact that I would like to um, I would like to customize this a little bit more maybe change it around a bit um, I definitely want to get another graphics card but that's not going to happen anytime soon because of moving and car repairs but other than that I can do uh, inexpensive things if I find stuff I have found um, which I might get eventually when they get it back in stock there is a, a website that does custom by like, cases like these they buy them and customize them I think it was 500 and 500 bucks roughly for the same thing of this but it has a paint job in the inside that I really liked I don't know if I want to go with this case again because it's just it's a good airflow case but it's big and bulky and very very heavy now, uh, another thing I'd like to talk about really quick is how um, everybody thinks that the Skylake processors, like the 6700K, is a much better processor for gaming because it has a higher uh, standard core clock, and supposedly they think that it can overclock better than my 5930K, or 59, yeah, 5930K that I have. It's normally a stock at 3.5 gigahertz. It's a six core. Now, I'm not a fan of the Skylake at all, being the fact that uh, it the chips have bent before on people that do use air coolers and move their tower around because they have to for cleaning or whatever. I've I've seen pictures of it where they have bent. Um, I also don't like them because they don't have as much. Uh, PCI Express lanes. Mine has 40, theirs has 16. Uh, another thing I don't like very much about Skylake also is the cache is much lower. I have a level 3 15 megabyte cache and I believe theirs is a 6 megabyte cache. Cache is important if people realize that or not. Alright, so, and the second part of that is they think that the that chip can it can overclock higher than a 5930K. And I'm about to show you that that's totally wrong. 
anybody that thinks that that's just a better chip is is dead wrong. I mean, I have nothing against Skylake, but I just don't personally like it. Now, if you look here, I have reached uh, a stable and safe overclock of basically 4.8 gigahertz on each core. Now, I haven't heard of any of the Skylake processors getting higher than 4.8 and being stable. I have tested this uh, stability for 15 minutes in both IDA64 and in uh, OC Scanner from EVGA, and they're stable well after 15 minutes. And it, it doesn't generate that much heat, really. That's probably because of the H100i that I'm running. But as you can see, it is a stable overclock at 4.8 gigahertz, basically. At 1.3 volts. So that puts down the theory that, you know, Skylake is a much better processor because it has a higher single core rate. I think they're about equal on the single core. But that 15 megabytes of level 3 cache comes in handy. And my PCI Express 40 lanes of that also comes in handy when, uh, you know, gaming and crap. So, if anybody has any doubts about that anymore. <laughs> I think that has been stable. I've been running it for quite a while now. Now, uh, one last thing. Now, if any of you have any suggestions, like I said earlier, about what you would like to see or any suggestions on what might make this look a little bit better, definitely hit me up in the comments below. And, uh, you know, I would definitely look into them because I'm thinking about doing, changing stuff, maybe even seeing if I can get this over to an automotive place and see if they can paint it, but it would be a little bit hard being the fact that nothing's modular. I mean, I can't take off those hard drive cages down there unless I um, take out the rivets. And I can't take out those bays at all. So it kind of makes it a little bit harder in this case. Um, I'm thinking about maybe going with a graphite series from Corsair, one of those ones with a big lid on the side that you can pull down. And, or I might go with maybe the Cooler Master uh, Master Case, the uh, best one that they have, which is, uh, I believe, their Master Case 5. I hear there's supposed to be a Master Case 7 coming out, but I haven't seen anything else on that yet. But anyway, guys, I am the Streaming Iraq War Veteran, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a good one.